And that brings us now to our political insiders who are here to weigh in on the growing VA controversy. And you can join in the conversation on Twitter at Harris Faulkner at FN Insiders, hashtag FRW. Some of you are already doing that. I'm going to get your comments in just a moment live on the air. John LeBoutlier is sitting with me here, former Republican congressman for New York. Pat Cadell, a former pollster for President Jimmy Carter and Fox News contributor via satellite on this Memorial Day weekend. And Doug Schoen, a former pollster for President Bill Clinton and Fox News contributor as well via satellite on this fine Memorial Memorial Day weekend. And look at that. It looks like you guys are still here. That's amazing <laughs> yeah. how they, it's just technology. Boom, there it is. Uh, let's yep. start with some ideas that are already crossing Twitter. I asked before we came into this conversation here for you guys to give me your ideas. Yvonne tweets, private care is needed if immediate appointment cannot be made for our vets. Vanessa A. Fiore writes, give our veterans vouchers and allow doctors to deduct their medical treatment from their IRS reportable income. Uh, Pat Cadell, I'm going to start with you tonight. She calls that a win-win. Yes, I think that, you know, that this is, we talked about last week, and it's obvious the problem that the VA has been going on for a long time. John can speak to his proposal, which goes to some of the things we're hearing now, letting vets go to private hospitals. But this has been going on for decade after decade. But what really bothers me the most is that there's a culture, we have a president who says, who by the way, and I'm very glad he went to Afghanistan today, but whose basic attitude is about the military has been, ha ha. And you know, and now he's in a crisis, so I would hope he would have gone anyway. I can't help but feeling it's partly to deflect the political criticism, because I think it's well deserved for the way the culture that in this government operates. Doug, is that too pessimistic or is that on the money with you? Well, I, I, I hope that Pat is being too cynical, but I fear that there's probably some truth to it. Um, Harris, I think this is one of those situations where it's not a question of rush to judgment. There's a need for action. General Shinseki has got to go. We need to adopt a variety of different options to get veterans the care they need immediately, whether it be vouchers, IRS deductions, or John's idea, which is to give uh, health care benefits similar to a congressman uh, to all veterans. One or the other or all of them have to be put in place and we need top to bottom overhaul of the VA, pure and simple. Uh, John, I, I want to talk with you about these calls for Eric Shinseki, uh, the <laughs> VA secretary, to resign and, and just get your thoughts on that. And Before that, let's pop up those numbers that I want to show everybody. Uh, this is a recent CBS poll. It showed when asked should Eric Shinseki resign, 45% of people said yes, 31% of people said no. I think this is interesting. A quarter of people said they don't know. I, I would say, arguably, they might not even know who he is. Well, like 40 percent of people don't know who the vice president is, so why would they know who the secretary and of veterans why affairs is that are? important? Well, look, this is a bigger problem than just the guy who's now running the VA. This thing's been going on for 50 years. We hear this now. I, I've been inundated since last week's show with veterans coming to me telling me their stories about what's happened yeah. to them since the mid-60s, the bad care. And I, I think the, the three of us, you know, what we do on this show is we try to look at politics in a big picture, right? And the big picture of this thing is the VA scandal is a template for what's wrong with politics in America, okay? The government doesn't give a damn about the people it's supposed to care for. They don't care about these veterans. They use them in the war. They send them eight times to Afghanistan. And when they come back, they send them off to some dump and they don't care about them. And they spend $490 million on curtains, office furniture, and conference rooms. And that's not just Obama spending it. The Republican House allocated the money. They have oversight. So they're equally guilty of dumping on our veterans, which is a sin of the worst degree. You know what, I want to go back, uh, Pat Cadell, to what President Obama, then candidate, 2008, said on the stump. Uh, and, and fast forward to where we are now. Let's watch that. How can we let this happen? How is this acceptable in the United States of America? The answer is it's not. It is an outrage. It is a betrayal of the ideals that we ask our troops to risk their lives for. But it doesn't have to be this way. 
not in this country, not if we decide that this time will be different. There are many aspects of this war that have gone inalterably wrong, but caring for our veterans is one thing we can still get right. The president started, how can we let this happen, 2008? It's 2014. Pat, that's a really good question. Well, it's the same one we should ask about his transparency and everything else. Look, you know, this is a president who said, I know nothing. The, Char the Sergeant Schultz defense, as it was with the IRS, as it is with every scandal, as it was been got, I don't know. I know nothing about it. You know, the problem is that there is a culture in Washington that, if, that John was alluding to and I was trying to refer to earlier, that it, of, of our government, of the government complex which is everyone in Washington is there to serve themselves. We have people in the VA getting bonuses for killing people, for God's sake. Obama hasn't cared anything about it any more than he has cared about what happened at the IRS or anything else. But the culture here is unbelievable. It is a, that the people serve the government. Government is there for us to feather our nest. The VA is the worst example, and it's so amazing now to see even Democrat, even people in my party upset who can't seem to get themselves upset about all the other scandals. But it is a mentality in Washington that says, screw the people and the hell with them, wow. as John said. And it's really, and the president, he doesn't really care. I'm sorry to be so cynical, but truthful. You know, Doug, when you look at all this and you hear about calls for Shinseki to resign, there is some concern, kind of a growing drumbeat of critics out there who say, well, if you let that happen, where will the accountability be? What do you think of that? Well, I think the accountability has to be that if you're running a department and it's not working and people are literally dying on your watch and there's abuse after abuse, as John was saying, going back to the 50s, you have to take bold and decisive action. Pat is right. The president and the administration have basically used a we-know-nothing defense for scandal after scandal. And Harris, the key point here is this goes to the lives of those who've given the most to our country. This is not not, you know, an abstract scandal about what might have happened with conservative groups or journalists. This goes to what average, everyday, hardworking and, yes, patriotic Americans have put up with for much too long. And there's got to be accountability and action now. Well. Independent, too, says on Twitter, uh, you know, I blame them all in Washington because the president and Congress are too busy fighting each other and not doing their jobs. We had a seminal moment, if you will, in terms of collecting ideas last Sunday night. John, you pitched one out. Let's watch that and then we'll talk about it. Here is a solution, OK? We are going to abolish the VA, Harris. Get rid of it. Close it down. Get rid of it. Hand every veteran an insurance card and the insurance card gives them the exact same insurance that every member of Congress mm. has. It has been a firestorm in social media. I have said I went to your Twitter feed F insiders to see what people were saying and they were putting me in their tweet line a tremendous response. Yeah. Why? A it's an idea that makes sense and it values a veterans health equal to a member of Congress. Now, frankly, I think a veteran's health care is more valuable than a member of Congress, but seeing as how Congress would have to vote on this thing. Now, I'd you like used to, to be in Congress, so yeah. you, you know what you speak, I'd like right? to see one veteran, uh, excuse me, one congressman tell me that his health care is more important than a veteran. I, so well, I we think have we, members, though, who've served. Oh, absolutely. And they would vote for this thing. They would vote for it. Sure yeah, they now, would. some of the viewers I saw, Doug and Pat, said that this isn't necessarily a fresh or a new idea, but it's the only one that they're hearing being talked about right now as well, going the, forward beyond the scandal. Let, let me say, yeah, and see, it's and a good idea, just, Harris. Uh, uh, yeah, it's just practical, it's reasonable, and it says to the American people what Pat was saying, and I know he'll speak no. to this now, that ordinary people in America who live, work, and pay their taxes, fight for their country, are entitled to the same benefits as the political class. Pat, please. Well, I want to say, then I disagree with my good friend and colleague Doug about the, the focus on the director. That's what Washington do. Let's fire him and do nothing. This has been going on for decades. 
Uh, General Sasaki was a, you know, was a great hero. I don't know whether he should be running. He probably should have been running the VA. But they will use that to get away from their own culpability. Lack of oversight, as John has said. The administration's abil ability to fluff off every scandal. And in the bureaucracy, a sense of entitlement that is so outrageously immoral. But that is the code of Washington until we sweep that aside. Look, if you, the, here's the point, ladies and gentlemen. If they will do this to veterans, what do they think they will do to you? That's wow. a and huge they do point. do it. That's a huge point. The other point I want to make that I had mentioned to Doug and Pat on Friday, Harris, was that during the debate over Obamacare, one of the arguments that the administration made was that Obamacare was going to be a success like health care for veterans in the VA was. <laughs> Well, look at what we've now learned about the quality of the care. And we are headed down that road. We hear people say, ultimately, we're going to have a single-payer well, plan. Single-payer plan is what the veterans have, basically. And it's a disaster. You have rationing. You have hiding on the books because you can't get the care to people when they need it. If they'll, as, they, as Pat and Doug just said, if they'll take a hero and throw the poor guy on the trash heap, what will they do to an average person? Doug, last thoughts on this particular issue, and then we're going to move on. You know, P Pat and John are right. Look, it isn't the director, but he is the symbol of the inefficiency and abuses. And top to bottom review needs to be done. Otherwise, the Democrats will pay an even bigger price than I, they are likely to pay at the polls in November. Mark my words. All right. I fibbed. You don't get the last word. Our viewers do. Time out says... Uh, the veterans deserve the same health care Congress has. They will never get it because the Congress believes they are elite. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Wow. Well, look, can I just make one other point, which John just raised, which is critical, which is this should change the debate about Obamacare. This is what they do to veterans. Now you want the government to run the national health care system. What do you think is going to happen? We have a case in point here. One of our political insiders, Doug Schoen, worked for the Clintons, so we'll get him to weigh in on this. New allegations that five Democrats slated to join the committee investigating Benghazi may have been pressured into joining. Hillary Clinton's camp reportedly urging them to participate to essentially protect the former Secretary of State during the Republican-led probe. Our political insiders are back now. John LeBoutlier sitting with me here in New York via satellite, Pat Cadell, Doug Schoen. Doug, obviously, from what I said at first, I'm going to start with you. Uh, is Please. Hillary Clinton in peril? Well, I don't know if she's in peril. We'll see, given the hearings. But the Democratic Party and the administration certainly are in peril. And there are a lot of facts that have to come out. I think the Democrats made the right decision to participate. The Republicans will, I think, have to be fact-based in their inquiry about what happened, what was the Secretary of State's role, what was the President's role, the National Security Advisor's role, to just get a timeline, answer questions about could military assistance have been rendered. All of these are fair and reasonable questions. I think it is less to protect Hillary Clinton than mm. it is to make sure that there is a balance to a fact-finding process that really? the vast majority Really? The American people well, because want Hillary time. Clinton yeah. said she was satisfied with the investigation's findings so far. Pat? Well, the American well, people I, aren't. I, I th Pat? Well, uh, the, uh, uh, Doug's right. The American people are not. And I think there's a real problem here. Uh, I look at the Democrats who are appointed, starting with Elijah Cummings, who has proven himself to be a super partisan. Of course, he's on, on a committee with Daryl Issa, who's even equally as partisan and bad. But, you know, we find that he was asking people to be investigated, the IRS. All the people they put on look like to me the kinds of Republicans who tried to defend Watergate rather than go after the facts and be judges of the facts. The Democrats run a risk. The Republicans run their risk, as we have said before, by being too political, mm. which people expect them to be. But if the Democrats, if facts come out that are undisputable and they react to trying to right. put political cover, there will be problems. Uh, uh, the Democrats, five of them now, have joined this Benghazi special committee. And you had a thought. Well, my, my big thought is... This committee is either going to mirror what's been going on in Washington and be a, a partisan mud fight. It hurts both parties and we don't get anywhere. Or some good spirit takes over it and they do search for the truth 
and the truth overwhelms the politics, and we'll find out what happened. Are, are you at all illuminated by the fact or, or optimistic that Democrats now have jumped on board? Because, I mean, there is an argument that, look, there were members of the party who wanted to boycott this. This right. is a move forward. I, don't, I didn't care. I knew they would be on. The big thing to me is the majority runs it, and, and we've talked before, Pat and Doug and I, that Congressman Gowdy has to set the tone for this thing. He can't be like Daryl Issa, who ruined all these mm. investigations by being too partisan. A chairman has to be seen as above politics. He's got to be seen as fair. It's so interesting to hear all of you take, uh, you know, kind of um, your own parties to the woodshed, yeah, if you will. Yeah, well, they all deserve right. it. Let, let's move on. Let's talk about Jeb Bush. A lot of people talking about Jeb Bush. Uh, Pat and Doug, he's been called a great thinker by many people. I mean, I know that our Fox News contributor, Carl Rove, has said that about him. He's a very deep thinker. But he actually is forming these think sessions with people. Oh. And he's said to read all sorts of policy. Oh. He's really focused yeah. in on how to make America better. I think we may have some difference on this among our group, Harris, but I think this is all to the good. The Republican Party has a really limited number of new ideas. I know Jeb Bush to be somebody who is thoughtful, who defies the conventions in his party, is willing to consider out-of-the-box solutions on taxes and spending and budgets. And uh, look, he does have uh, problems mostly associated with exhaustion with the family name and obviously his brother's presidency. But this is to the good, and I'm here to say I think he is the strongest potential Republican opponent to Hillary, notwithstanding the problems the party has and Jeb Bush has because of his name and history. And Pat, even some Democrats have, have indicated that, you know, he is somebody to watch for. Your thoughts? Well, I, I've always had great respect for him, and I respect beneath the process he's, he's doing this, but I have a fundamental definitional problem here, which is as long as Jeb Bush is willing to be the candidate of the, of the Republican wing of the political class against Hillary Clinton as the Democratic uh, leader of the political class, the country will not be served by an election with either of them. Because as long as it is to keep the same people in power, the Clinton, as I said right. last week, the guys with blue hair with wanted money, and on, on the Bush side, all of these Bushies, including some of the people on all our right, network. Pat. I'm sorry. I want to give you five seconds. Uh, it's not going to work. We had the first Bush said, I, mm. I will not raise taxes. He broke the pledge. The one then the Democrat, sun comes Doug along. Schoen, thinks Jeb Bush yeah. has a it's better It's not going to happen. The country can do better than the Bushes and the Clintons. Uh, I got a That's billion how Fox dollars, reports Harris. on the Sunday, May 25th, 2014.